Good morning. Thanks for joining me on this Wednesday devotional time. I trust your day will be wonderful and blessed. I've already had a blessed morning and want to share something with you that was very special today. Most of you know that I love books. I love to read. I love to collect books. Uh, it's a passion. I give away a lot of books. I put them to our library. I've given people books. But I still have quite a few. We have them, I have them for several reasons. I have books that are devotional books. I have books that are research books, books that are simply for uh, pleasure reading, books that are for educational reading, all kinds of books. Recently, I found a book that I had not seen that I had purchased sometime in the past. It's a devotional book, and I'll put it up here so you can see it called 101 Hymn Stories. Now, I like devotional books, and I read four or five, half a dozen at a time, each morning reading one devotional at a time. This particular book was written in 1923. 1923. The book's still in pretty good condition for being that old. 1923. But as I read the devotional... Today, I read a devotional about a hymn called, O Little Town of Bethlehem. (laughs) Have you ever heard of that hymn? This book was written in over a hundred years ago, 1923. But on the page here where this book is, I'm going to try to show it to you. On the page, someone had had this devotional book and someone had read or used this devotional book and had dated the devotional book. See if you can see what this says right here at the front. Uh, I don't know if you can get this or not. Can you see up there at the top? It says 5-25-30. Someone on May 25th, 1930, used this same devotional book that I've used today. Wow. I don't know what that does for you, but it thrilled my heart to think I have a connection with a person who read this same devotional that I read 94 years ago. Isn't that amazing? They didn't change the words since that time. They didn't change the song. But we can rejoice over the same truths that long ago. I'm thankful that I learned to have a devotional time when I was very young. My parents had a family devotional time. It was a little different because a lot of it was singing. I watched my mom have devotional time standing under a little light in our hallway. We had devotions and they even gave us little children's books that we could use for our devotions. But what a blessing it has been all these years. Last Sunday we celebrated Father's Day and I'm thankful for my dad and my mom. I'm thankful for their impact, but I'm also thankful for others who became my spiritual dads, my spiritual fathers and mothers. I remember Sunday school teachers. I remember leaders of youth groups. I remember a lady who paid my way to youth camp the year that I trusted, that I surrendered to ministry. I'm thankful for all of those people in my lives. In my life. And then this morning I read again from 2 Timothy the way Paul considered Timothy one of his sons. Let me read that to you. Here's how he addresses his second letter to Timothy. He says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son. Timothy wasn't his son, but he was his spiritual son. I want to just share this morning that you and I can have impact on people's lives. We can, if they were not their physical father or mother, we can become their spiritual father or mother. We can impact their lives. And somebody impacted my life today by dating their time reading a devotional 94 years ago. That person probably isn't alive, but 
We never know the impact we're having on people's lives. Let me encourage you today to become a spiritual father, a spiritual mother. Uh, teach someone to have devotions. Help young people to grow spiritually. Let's don't expect that to happen without our help. God's placed us here. He's given us a job. Let's be faithful to minister to those all around us. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.